This is, to say the least, a very special honor to be here with you this evening. My family has deep roots here at the University of Guelph. I have a mother who graduated here in 1958. I have a sister who graduated here. And I have a brother-in-law who graduated here. My mother actually was one of, I think, three or four women who graduated from the School of Veterinary Medicine uh, at that time. Just a small anecdote. When she graduated, sorry, when she applied to come here, she received a letter. And the letter said that they will accept or they will consider all qualified male candidates, and then they will consider women candidates. <laughs> when I came here to the University of Guelph, I was told that the percentage of women to men was 68%. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so times have changed. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story Actually, I should also say, when I came here seven years ago, uh, it was a special place for those reasons. And it has been my home here for the last several years, as it has been for you. It's been a happy place, and I think we are all lucky to have been here. In the days before uh, the great uh, African anti-apartheid leader, Nelson Mandela, was released from jail, the then president of South Africa, F.W. de Klerk came and paid him a visit. The president wanted to release Mandela and to begin the negotiations and the reforms that ultimately culminated in the achievement of majority rule in South Africa. Mandela protested his sudden and very unexpected release, arguing that his people would not, be yet, would not yet be ready to receive him Mandela believed he needed a few more days so that appropriate preparations could be taken by those supporters outside, waiting for him outside of prison. The South African president would have none of it and insisted that Mandela be released as soon as possible. They haggled and eventually reached a compromise. But Mandela later noted in his memoirs that there was no shortage of irony, that it was the jailer who wanted to release the prisoner, but could not. While the prisoner himself wanted to remain in jail, but was, over his objections, being released. <laughs> now, of course, I would not, I don't want you to think, or I hope you don't think that the University of Guelph has been any sort of prison. <laughs> But what's remarkable about Mandela's story is what happened after he was released. He was the man, of course, that everybody watched. The role model on whose shoulders were the great hopes and aspirations of so many people. Embodied in him were all the great things that the world could be. After so many years in jail, Mandela still demonstrated integrity and forgiveness and a sense of justice. Mandela was unique for his lack of bitterness towards his former oppressors, and yet, surprisingly, his were values that we all share and aspire to. They are his legacy. The Supreme Court, the Canadian Supreme Court Justice Frank Iacobucci, has said that a university should not be measured in terms of the number of publications of its faculty, or the size of its library, or the grade point average of its students. Rather, it should be measured in terms of what the students take to the community after they leave the university. What will people notice when you leave this place? What will be your legacy? They will notice you taking the high road 
and standing up for what is right. They will notice your individuality, your willingness to differentiate yourself, your determination to defy the fashions and the trends of the day and leave your mark or make your own statement. They will notice your humbleness when you succeed and your strength and your perseverance when you do not. Your courage in hard times. Your courage in times of ill health and uncertainty. They will notice your patience. They will notice your sense of empathy, your ability to forgive others, to learn from others, and to inspire others. I see the way people learn from others all the time. In February, when Canadian NBA superstar Steve Nash lit his torch on the Olympic relay, he said his thoughts were of Terry Fox, an ordinary man who faced down, to be sure, extraordinary challenges. And as many of you will know, when freestyle skier Alexandre Bilodeau won his gold medal in Vancouver, he said it was his brother who inspired him and who had taught him so much about life. Sometimes the circumstances in which we draw strength from others are more humble. I have a cousin who once told me that he long admired people who were smart, who were clever, and who were quick-witted. More recently, as he came upon hard times of his own, he told me that he came to value those ideals less. Instead, he began to value someone who showed him generosity and compassion and integrity. The legacy of that person is that my cousin is a changed man. I've asked student leaders who and what has inspired them. And it turns out that the small acts were as big or as important as the big, excuse me, as the big ones. It was the aging rock star who quietly showed up at the food bank to help, the anonymous student who showed up in support of the event that nobody else showed up for. It was the high school student who told, sorry, the high school teacher who told his student that he believed in her. It was the boss who was more mentor than manager. In my world, every person brings something to the table, shy or bold, sciences or the arts, Aggies or engineering, man or woman. Each of us weaves threads into the personal fabric of those around us. Do not underestimate the many and varied ways, the many and varied examples that you set for others, whether your name is Nelson or John or Kyla or Muhammad or Sylvie. Do not misjudge the extent to which those qualities that make you different are valued by others your willingness to show compassion, to listen to others, your ability to recall someone's name, or to ask about those whose names you may have forgotten, will all be noted and remembered by those you inspire around you. Maybe the most important gifts are those that we share with others. And the most important responsibility you have as graduates is to conduct yourself 
with the knowledge that others are watching and are learning from you. The hand of friendship that you extend, the ear that you lend, the goodwill you demonstrate, the good deeds that you do will all be seen by others and appreciated. And I think it will all go to make this world a much better place. Do not make this a platitude. Be aware that as graduates, you remain role models for others. And like Nelson Mandela, whether you know it or not, your real legacy will be how you affect somebody else. Thanks for being here. Have a good night and congratulations.